Financial Inclusion Week is a global phenomenon where donor agencies to banks, to fintechs, to blockchain technology companies, everybody involved in the financial inclusion space comes together to recognize that every single human being in the world needs to make a payment. They need to save, they need credit. And therefore, by excluding people, we are increasing inequality world over. Financial Inclusion Week is a time where all of us come together we celebrate our successes, but also to ask ourselves hard questions and have real conversations on how we can push the frontier of financial inclusion and achieve universal financial inclusion globally. We want to have access by a majority of the people, low-income people, middle-income people, and upper-income people. We want to get people out of the informal sector to the formal sector. We are partnering with uh, the banks that uh, we supervise. We started by allowing banks to partner with uh, telcos or mobile money providers. We've licensed very many. There are many people who are already benefiting. We now have uh, 19 million. Uganda is one of the second countries in the East African region to have the highest number of adults that are financially included. However, there is a big gap between access and usage. Actually, we have already rolled out the consumer protection guidelines because we want equity, we want fairness, we want transparency within the sector. And it is mainly going to benefit those uh, small savers who have got complaints and we shall be handling these uh, complaints uh, ourselves. In my pillar, we mainly focus on uh, working with government and industry associations, having in place uh, laws and regulations that facilitate and promote uh, financial inclusion uh, for the poor. The business environment in Uganda with respect to financial inclusion is a good environment because most of the laws and enabling laws are in place. Of course, there's one major law which everyone is looking forward to, that's the National Payment Systems Law. There's been a cry from different stakeholders and different parts of the country that mobile money is playing such a critical role in our society and yet there is no strong legal framework to facilitate that. We are working hand in hand with mainly the banks, uh, the um, MDIs. We play a very uh, interesting role to ensure that the providers do then uh, provide the necessary training, they provide the necessary information so that as and when customers start using these products, then it doesn't become a bigger challenge um, as well. Financial inclusion, in my view, means re reducing friction costs for both households, individuals, uh, SMEs, uh, and to have really access to financial services at a very affordable cost. So we've recently launched an SME incubator. We put them through a 90-day training we provide a mentor for about 12 months after that, and we feel like that's a really good intervention in making um, these SMEs and small businesses sustainable, because that's where the problem is, and they are really um, create 90% of the new jobs in the country. Uh, there are several interventions that we're doing as a bank, one of which is the Women in Business, where we have uh, partners that we work with to train uh, different groups, especially the women uh, in rural areas, the traders, and the professionals. Currently we're running a campaign called Butter for Cash and out of that we've been able to grow our clubs to over 25,000 uh, clubs. We have a mission of alleviating poverty. Over 50% of our customers live in rural areas. Finca is actually also moving digital. We believe that digital financial services giving access through digital channels whether it's mobile, whether it is uh, digital field automated systems, will give us the ability as Finca to reach the farthest customer in the corner of uh, this country. We recently launched Agent Banking. Uh, the industry has about 10.9 million accounts. However, the, the bankable population is twice that number in the country. But more importantly, beyond payment services, are they accessing credit, affordable credit? You know, do they then are they then able to deploy it into businesses, into farming, and so the activities that then grow and transform the economy. Uh, we have gone beyond the branches to embrace uh, mobile banking vehicles, which are branches on wheels, 
And as I speak, we now have about 11 vehicles going to different parts of the country and serving people. Because we are not a role-based institution, we focus upon uh, the financially included even within the urban areas, especially women, and we have a, a particular product for women that have had tend to uh, fear the formal financial institutions and uh, they are not considered exactly bankable. And because we focus on small and medium entrepreneurs, we specifically go and look out uh, for those groups of, of people. EFC does a lot of research around the customer to fully understand uh, their need and uh, design uh, tailor-made solutions for them. At Senare Bank, we designed products like those meant for the youth, products like those meant for women, products uh, like those meant for people who are still at school. By being able to design products that are suitable and attractive to different sectors, uh, different people, different markets, we believe we should be having many more people come into the banking space. We have four major categories, uh, I would say, of, uh, of our target market that we're looking at in our quest to include people. The first one, I would say, is uh, the disabled people. When you look at the disabled, uh, they are largely unbanked. The other target market is uh, the women. In fact, is a same in the foundation as an example of some of our initiatives. Mobile money is obviously, as the product is expanding, is more and more service, more and more payment option, service option. You can access loan today, you can save, you can, you can make a payment remotely or even in a shop with MomoPay, this product that we launched with uh, this Bosco campaign recently. So we believe that this is like, oh, we actually like drive the financial inclusion agenda in Uganda. Maybe more, maybe more than any other player here. I think uh, Airtel and Airtel Money's journey is well known. And I think we are really going after banking the unbanked. I think the reach of banks in Uganda has been largely urban and largely to a certain uh, section of people who have an income. But I think mobile money by itself uh, reaches deep and rural. And I think we have played a significant role today in driving financial inclusion. Airtel has 10 million customers, out of which nearly 5 million customers own mobile money. And these 5 million customers directly drive financial inclusion. What we are doing as a company is to engage better with our customers, get a better understanding of how they appreciate and understand our products. Uh, and through that way, once we have a happy customer and an engaged customer, we believe that we'll have more usage uh, of insurance and more usage of uh, financial services. I think the future is very bright and I think uh, players like I.O. are doing um, a significant uh, job in actually driving innovation but also driving financial inclusion at the same time. I think the onus is on us to ensure that uh, the reach of uh, financial products and services um, is uh, well maintained and well integrated in Uganda and uh, the sky is the limit. In a nutshell what we're talking about is how can we provide a platform for learning, for introducing new services or new systems that will drive inclusion faster. My appeal to all the players and to everybody out there is that the persons that we think are unbankable can actually make business sense and that is how we get financial inclusion right. Our appeal is that this goal be supported across the board and the various enablers, technology, uh, legislative framework, awareness, uh, affordability, very very important, affordability is an important question and access and reach be facilitated across the various spectra of the economy. We must have products that respond to the requirements of those people. It's uh, not just savings, it's not just uh, access to credit, but we must understand their problems in terms of access to, to savings, access to loans, uh, and respond to, to, to those requirements. So the question for this year, for all of us celebrating financial inclusion, for all of us celebrating our successes, is how do we move forward? How do we create products and services that people want to use on a regular basis? that create incentives, that create a value proposition that matters. Financial services is no longer the domain of only banks. It's no longer the domain of only mobile network operators. There are going to be unusual marriages. All of these unusual relationships means that regulators need to be forward thinking. We cannot factor in every risk, 
But that does not mean that we stifle innovation. Yeah.